The Britannic, Brythonic, or British Celtic languages form one of the two branches of the Insular Celtic language family, the other is Goidelic. The name Brythonic was derived by Welsh Celticist John Rees from the Welsh word Brython, meaning ancient Britons as opposed to an Anglo-Saxon or Gael. The Britannic languages derive from the common Britannic language, spoken throughout Great Britain during the Iron Age and Roman period. In the 5th and 6th centuries emigrating Britons also took Britannic speech to the continent, most significantly in Brittany and Britonia. During the next few centuries the language began to split into several dialects, eventually evolving into Welsh, Cornish, Breton, Cumbric and probably Pictish. Welsh and Breton continue to be spoken as native languages, while a revival in Cornish has led to an increase in speakers of that language. Cumbric and Pictish are extinct, having been replaced by Goidelic and English speech. The Isle of Man and Orkney may also have originally spoken a Britannic language, but this was later supplanted by Goidelic on the Isle of Man and Norse on Orkney. Due to emigration, there was a Britannic community in the Kingdom of the Swabian Galicia. There is also a community of Britannic language speakers in Yvladva. The names Britannic and Brythonic are scholarly conventions referring to the Celtic languages of Britain and to the ancestral language they originated from, designated Common Britannic, in contrast to the Goidelic languages originating in Ireland. Both were created in the 19th century to avoid the ambiguity of earlier terms such as British and Kimric. Brythonic was coined in 1879 by the Celticist John Rees from the Welsh word Brython. Britannic, derived from Britain and also earlier spelled Britonic and Britannic, emerged later in the 19th century. It became more prominent through the 20th century, and was used in Kenneth H. Jackson's highly influential 1953 work on the topic, Language and History in Early Britain. Jackson noted that by that time Brythonic had become a dated term, and that of late there has been an increasing tendency to use Britannic instead. Today, Britannic often replaces Brythonic in the literature. Rudolf Thurnison used Britannic in his influential A Grammar of Old Irish, though this never became popular among subsequent scholars. Comparable historical terms include the medieval Latin lingua Britannica and Sermo Britannicus and the Welsh Brythonic. Some writers use British for the language and its descendants, though due to the risk of confusion, others avoid it or use it only in a restricted sense. Jackson, and later John T. Koch, used British only for the early phase of the common Britannic language. Before Jackson's work, Britannic were often used for all the P-Celtic languages, including not just the varieties in Britain but those continental Celtic languages that similarly experienced the evolution of the Proto-Celtic language element slash kw slash to slash p slash. However, subsequent writers have tended to follow Jackson's scheme, rendering this use obsolete. The name Britain itself comes from Latin, Britannia Britannia, via Old French Bretagne and Middle English Bretagne, possibly influenced by Old English Brighton. Probably also from Latin Britannia, ultimately an adaptation of the native word for the island, Pritani. An early written reference to the British Isles may derive from the works of the Greek explorer Pythias of Massalia, later Greek writers such as Diodorus of Sicily and Strabo who quote Pythias' use of variants such as Pyro Epsilon Tau Tau Alpha Nu Iota Kappa. The Britannic, Land, Island, and Nu Eta Sigma Omicron Iota Beta Rho Epsilon Tau Tau Alpha Nu Iota Alpha Iota, Britannic Islands, with Pritani being a Celtic word that might mean the painted ones or the tattooed folk, referring to body decoration. Knowledge of the Britannic languages comes from a variety of sources. The early languages information is obtained from coins, inscriptions, and comments by classical writers as well as place names and personal names recorded by them. For later languages, there is information from medieval writers and modern native speakers, together with place names. The names recorded in the Roman period are given in Rivet and Smith. The Britannic branch is also referred to as P-Celtic because linguistic reconstruction of the Britannic reflex of the Proto-Indo-European phoneme KW is P as opposed to Goidelic C. Such nomenclature usually implies acceptance of the P-Celtic and Q-Celtic hypothesis rather than the Insular Celtic hypothesis because the term includes certain continental Celtic languages as well. Other major characteristics include, initial S, lenition, voiceless spirants, nasal assimilation, the family tree of the Britannic languages is as follows, Britannic languages in use today are Welsh, Cornish and Breton. Welsh and Breton have been spoken continuously since they formed. For all practical purposes Cornish died out during the 18th or 19th centuries, but a revival movement has more recently created small numbers of new speakers. Also notable are the extinct language Cumbric, and possibly the extinct Pictish. 
One view, advanced in the 1950s and based on apparently unintelligible OM inscriptions, was that the Picts may have also used a non-Indo-European language. This view, while attracting broad popular appeal, has virtually no following in contemporary linguistic scholarship. Britain and Ireland in the early mid-first millennium, before the founding of Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Mainly Britannic areas. Mainly Pictish areas. Mainly Goidelic areas. The modern Britannic languages are generally considered to all derive from a common ancestral language termed Britannic, British, Common Britannic, Old Britannic or proto britannic which is thought to have developed from Proto-Celtic or early Insular Celtic by the 6th century BC. Britannic languages were probably spoken before the Roman invasion at least in the majority of Great Britain. Though the Isle of Man later had a Goidelic language, Manx. The theory has been advanced that part of Ireland spoke a Britannic language, usually termed Ivernic. Before it was displaced by primitive Irish, although the authors Dylan and Chadwick reject this theory as being implausible. During the period of the Roman occupation of what is now England and Wales, common Britannic borrowed a large stock of Latin words, both for concepts unfamiliar in the pre-urban society of Celtic Britain such as urbanization and new tactics of warfare, as well as for rather more mundane words which displace native terms. Approximately 800 of these Latin loan words have survived in the three modern Britannic languages. Pictish may have resisted Latin influence to a greater extent than the other Britannic languages. It is probable that at the start of the post-Roman period Common Britannic was differentiated into at least two major dialect groups, Southwestern and Western. Dot. Between the end of the Roman occupation and the mid-6th century the two dialects began to diverge into recognizably separate varieties, the Western into Cumbric and Welsh and the Southwestern into Cornish and its closely related sister language Breton which was carried to continental Armorica. Jackson showed that a few of the dialect distinctions between West and Southwest Britannic go back a long way. New divergencies began around AD 500 but other changes that were shared occurred in the 6th century. Other common changes occurred in the 7th century onward and are possibly due to inherent tendencies. Thus the concept of a common Britannic language ends by AD 600. Substantial numbers of Britons certainly remained in the expanding area controlled by Anglo-Saxons, but over the 5th and 6th centuries they mostly adopted the English language. The Britannic languages spoken in what is now Scotland, the Isle of Man and what is now England began to be displaced in the 5th century through the settlement of Irish-speaking Gaels and Germanic peoples. Henry of Huntingdon wrote that Pictish was no longer spoken in c. 1129. The displacement of the languages of Britannic descent was probably complete in all of Britain except Cornwall and Wales and the English counties bordering these areas such as Devon by the 11th century. Western Herefordshire continued to speak Welsh until the late 19th century, and isolated pockets of Shropshire speak Welsh today. The regular consonantal sound changes from Proto-Celtic to Welsh, Cornish, and Breton are summarized in the following table. Where the graphemes have a different value from the corresponding IPA symbols, the IPA equivalent is indicated between slashes. V represents a vowel, C represents a consonant. The principal legacy left behind in those territories from which the Britannic languages were displaced is that of toponyms and hydronyms. There are many Britannic place names in lowland Scotland and in the parts of England where it is agreed that substantial Britannic speakers remained. Names derived from Britannic include London, Pennacook, Perth, Aberdeen, York, Dorchester, Dover, and Colchester. Britannic elements found in England include Bree and Ball for hills, while some such as Coombe or Coombe for a small deep valley and Tor for a hill are examples of Britannic words that were borrowed into English. Others reflect the presence of Britain such as Dumbarton, from the Scottish Gaelic Dunbreton meaning Fort of the Britons, or Walton meaning a ton or settlement where the well Britons still lived. The number of Celtic river names in England generally increases from east to west, a map showing these being given by Jackson. These names include one such as Avon, Chu, Froom, Axe, Brew, and Exe, but also river names containing the elements Dare slash Dar slash Dur and Wen E. G. Derwent, Darwin, Deer, Adur, Dur, Darent, Went. These names exhibit multiple different Celtic roots. One is Dubri Water, Brett. Dur, C, Dower, W, Dur, also found in the place name Dover, this is the source of rivers name Dur. Another is Deru O Oak or True, Brett. Derv, C, Dero, W, Deru, coupled with two agent suffixes, and N U. This is the origin of Derwent, Darent, and Darwin. 
The final route to be examined is when. In Roman Britain, there were three tribal capitals named Uenta, whose meaning was place, town. Some, including J.R.R. Tolkien, have argued that Celtic has acted as a substrate to English for both the lexicon and syntax. It is generally accepted that Britannic effects on English are lexically few aside from toponyms, consisting of a small number of domestic and geographical words, which may include bin, brock, car, comb, crag and tor. Another legacy may be the sheep counting system Yantan Tethera in the north, in the traditionally Celtic areas of England such as Cumbria. Several Cornish mining words are still in use in English language mining terminology, such as Costian, Gunnies, and Vug. Those who argue against the theory of a more significant Britannic influence than is widely accepted point out that many toponyms have no semantic continuation from the Britannic language. A notable example is Avon, which comes from the Celtic term for river Abona or the Welsh term for river, Avon, but was used by the English as a personal name. Likewise, the river Ouse, Yorkshire contains the word USA which merely means water and the name of the river Trent simply comes from the Welsh word for a trespasser. It has been argued that the use of paraphrastic constructions in the English verb, which is more widespread than in the other Germanic languages, is traceable to Britannic influence. Others, however, find this unlikely due to the fact that many of these forms are only attested in the later Middle English period, these scholars claim a native English development rather than Celtic influence. Ian G. Roberts postulates Northern Germanic influence, despite such constructions not existing in Norse. Literary Welsh has the simple present caraf equals I love and the present state of your wife in Karu equals I am loving, where the Britannic syntax is partly mirrored in English. In the Germanic sister languages of English there is only one form, for example ich liebe in German, though in colloquial usage in some German dialects, a progressive aspect form has evolved which is formally similar to those found in Celtic languages and somewhat less similar to the modern English form, e. g. I am working as ich bin im Arbeiten, literally, I am on the working. The same structure is also found in modern Dutch, alongside other structures. These parallel developments suggest that the English progressive is not necessarily due to Celtic influence, moreover, the native English development of the structure can be traced over 1000 years and more of English literature. Some researchers argue that other elements of English syntax reflect Britannic influences. For instance, in English tag questions, the form of the tag depends on the verb form in the main statement. The German nicht war, and the French n'est pas, by contrast, are fixed forms which can be used with almost any main statement. It has been claimed that the English system has been borrowed from Britannic, since Welsh tag questions vary in almost exactly the same way. Far more notable, but less well known, are Britannic influences on Scottish Gaelic, though Scottish and Irish Gaelic, with their wider range of preposition-based periphastic constructions, suggest that such constructions descend from their common Celtic heritage. Scottish Gaelic contains several P-Celtic loanwords, but as there is a far greater overlap in terms of Celtic vocabulary, than with English, it is not always possible to disentangle P and Q Celtic words. However some common words such as Manod equals Welsh Manod, Cumbric may are particularly evident. Often the Britannic influence on Scots Gaelic is indicated by considering Irish language usage, which is not likely to have been influenced so much by Britannic. In particular, the word srath is a native Goidelic word, but its usage appears to have been modified by the Britannic cognate ustra whose meaning is slightly different. The effect on Irish has been the loan from British of many Latin-derived words. This has been associated with the Christianization of Ireland from Britain. Thanks for watching.